Hi, I'm Melissa Natterick with Sentimental Salvage and Design and today we're going to be making sweater pumpkins. This is one of my most popular, well, it's the most popular fall workshop that I have here at the store. And I've decided to put it online for all you guys to be able to um, see how I do it. And yeah, for those of you that are far away. Okay, let's get going. So these are the pumpkins. These are some examples of ones that I've made. So this one is made more out of the body of a sweater because it's a big one. And then you can just decorate and embellish it with whatever, whatever you decide. So that's one example. This is another one. So you can use any kind of sweater. When you're choosing your sweater, just look at the sleeves. That's the most important part. And you can make, usually you can make three, three pumpkins out of one sleeve. So you get six pumpkins, this kind of size pumpkins out of one sweater. Plus you can make really big ones out of the body. So there's a lot you can get and just raid your local thrift store and you can get um, every color and whatever will work best with your decor. So these are some examples, so let's get going. Okay, so I already have this cut. This is just a piece of a sweater. Looks like it's the same sweater that I used for this guy. So it's super simple. I just use these yarn needles and you can use whatever kind you can find basically. These plastic ones are good, but if you're using a sweater with a tighter knit, these ones are kind of blunt so they might not be so easy to work with. These ones are my favorite. They're a metal needle and they have this big loop. So they're, these work, work really, really well. And I get these at Walmart. They come in a pack of, I think three different sizes. And then of course there's your regular metal ones. So, and then most of the stuff, you can get it at a dollar store. So just raid your local dollar store for these greens I happen to get from Michael's. Um, all their fall stuff is on sale already. So, but this is just butcher's twine from the dollar store. And I'm just gonna thread this needle. And basically what you're going to do is, I tend to, this is how I do it. So not saying that this is the right way and this is the only way, this is just how I do it. There's always a wider end and I like that to be the bottom of my pumpkin. So I always start there. I don't, I, there really isn't a reason. I just start there. And I usually start at the seam. And basically you're just going about quarter inch to half inch, depending on the knit, how loose the knit is of your sweater, down from the top and same with your running stitch. And that's all you're doing is creating a running stitch all the way around. So super, super easy. And you can do this with, you can make these pumpkins out of anything. These sweater pumpkins this way is just, I find it, making them out of the sleeve is just simple. And I know there's no sew methods and whatnot out there, but I just like the way these ones end up looking when they're done. They're just my favorite. And this will be the third or the fourth fall that I've been making these. So it's a little bit of practice, but this is my first one this year. So hopefully I don't forget a step. Okay, I'm just gonna pull that a little bit more so there's no waste. And I'm just going to pull that. It's really important to make sure that you pull your sweater place your sweater sleeve inside out. Because um, you don't want all of this janky mess on the, on, the, on the outside of your pumpkin. Grab some scissors and just cut that off. And I always have a heat gun handy and I just give it a little dab of glue on that knot just for extra security. I mean, they're supposed to be little decor pieces, so they're just supposed to sit there. 
They're not supposed to be like tossed around or anything, but who knows? So I'm just going to do the same thing on the other end. You can use um, regular yarn to do this part. The thing that I've found is that it's not very strong. You have to make sure it's a really strong yarn because there's nothing more annoying than when you, you've got your pumpkin all stuffed and you're pulling that really tight to make sure you've got a good, good closure and your yarn breaks. And then you just got to do this part all over again. Not the end of the world, but Okay, so now this one, I'm just gonna leave that open. So I've got it wide open and I'm going to turn it now right side out. So see, this is the bottom of your pumpkin. I'm gonna zoom that in a bit. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, it won't let me. I guess I won't be zooming it in. Okay, so now stuffing. I use the polyfill stuffing from Walmart. Um, you can use anything. You can use plastic bags. You can use an old pillow. You can use whatever you want. This is just what I use. And as you're shoving it in there, you're gonna wanna be closing it up. And you're gonna want quite a bit. You want it to be pretty, pretty tightly stuffed. You gotta kinda judge by the knit of your sweater again because you don't want it so stuffed that you can see your stuffing through the weave. Like you'll be able to see it a little bit, but you don't want it super stretched so that you just see that white stuffing through the weave. Okay, so now we're gonna pull this tight Tie knot here. Okay, so we've got the knot tied in there. And now we want to pull that pretty tight. Shove that loose ends in there. And then we are going to tie this up again. All right. Okay, now I'm trying to remember. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this. Same thing, we'll just put a little dot. It doesn't need much, just a little wee bit and it holds that together. So that's not, well this one might be long enough. Okay. So now what we need is so also from the dollar store, this is just jute twine. Um, depending on the size of your pumpkin, you can get away with using bigger stuff. Like this one's little, so I'm using this size of twine. You can see that little. This one's a little bit bigger, so I was able to get away with a bigger size. So you can use some big stuff like this. So just judge by your pumpkin and you don't want too big a twine or maybe you do, I don't know. It doesn't matter, really. Okay, so now this is my method as to judging how much of this I'm going to need to create the little wedges in your in your pumpkin. So how I do it is I lay it across like this then I just hold it and then I wrap this around one, two, three and then pull it down here. So you've got three full wraps on this pumpkin and then I just cut it off. And then you just want to find the 
center of this jute twine that you've measured out. Just find the center and then take that center and place it directly on the top um, knot of your pumpkin. And then you're basically, you're going to stretch it across. You're gonna flip it over, pull this twine. You're going to turn it like this and a quarter turn. And you're gonna pull it snug so that it's giving you that wedge shape and do the same thing this way, pull it across. Give it a quarter turn, pull it. Go around again, same idea, quarter turn, little snug and around. And then up top here, we're at the top again. This is where we tie our knot. But I'm gonna show you that again because I know this can get a little bit confusing. Once you get the hang of it, it's super easy. The most important part is to make sure that you're holding it snug. You wanna be, you wanna pull it in just enough to give your pumpkin those nice grooves. Okay, so again, I'm finding the center. I've got the center of the twine. I don't remember which end was, oh, there's the top. I guess it doesn't really matter, but. Okay, so pull it across, put the center on the top knot, pull it across, flip your pumpkin over, bring that twine up, quarter turn, snug it up. Snug it up. Oop. This step kind of makes you feel like you need 14 hands, but once you get the hang of it, it'll be, it'll be fine. Okay, and then just tie a knot without, hopefully, my fingers stuck. There we go. Okay. So there, now you can kind of play with it a little bit and make sure your, your wedges are kind of even. They don't have to be perfect. It's a pumpkin. And then these two, you can, sometimes what I do is I will, I'll just cut them a little bit shorter like this one. And then I just untwist it and it gives you these little little pieces here like this, okay? So I'm just gonna leave those for now. But there's another step. This pumpkin's actually pretty smushed. But there's another step that just makes this a little bit better. You'll find that some pumpkins want to stay kind of tall, which is also okay. But if you find that your pumpkin is too tall and you want to shrink it, it gives it that little squashed. Basically, you're gonna use your butcher's twine again or your yarn or whatever, and you're gonna push it right in the middle and come out one side of your knot here. There we go. Pull it through and then go back down on the other side of the knot and up and out. The same thing on the bottom. Actually, I did that the wrong way. You want the bottom to stay looking like this. You don't want to add a bunch of knots and whatnot on the bottom because otherwise your pumpkin won't sit properly. So we're going to do this the opposite way. We're going to go in the top because it doesn't matter, we're gonna be covering it up with flowers and whatnot here. So same thing, just go on one side and the other for stability. There we go. Okay. So I don't need all that excess. And basically what this does, tie a knot here, 
and when you pull, it just, it's really hard to tell on this one, but it just squishes it in a little bit. It makes your pumpkin so that he's actually sitting on this part instead of right on that center. So it's more stable when it's sitting there. It's so the same thing, just give it a knot. Cut that off. and a little dot of glue. Okay, super simple, right? So now, what I've done is I go digging out in the bush, in the woods, and I find these little, little pieces of twigs and I just cut them. I cut one end on an angle and the other end just flat, so I can just stick those on the pumpkin like that. Oh, my glue is still. So I want just a little one. These are all pretty big. These aren't ideal. I'm gonna use this one. But you can use anything. I have a cork. Um, a cork would work really, really well there too. You could use anything, a, a cabinet knob and you can paint it to, to match. You can do kind of whatever you want. So now I'm going to put this on first. Yep. I'm gonna put this on first and then I can add my flowers and my greens around it. So we're just gonna give this a good wad of glue and we're gonna put it down and we're gonna push until that is set. The hot glue works pretty fast, but. Okay, that's pretty secure. So now I have all of these little greens, but I also have this wire. I'm not gonna use that stuff, I'm gonna use this. So this is dollar store craft wire, and it is wrapped with like a jute or a, like a raffia over it, which makes it kinda more decorative, more fun. I'm just gonna take length of this out. I'm trying to not, there we go. That should be long enough. Wire cutters. And then what I do with this is find your, kind of your center point. Gives you an idea of where center is. And then also from the dollar store, and the dollar store I'm talking about mostly is Dollarama. Um, you can get some fun stuff at Dollar Tree too, but this stuff I've gotten from Dollarama. So this is the beads, also in the craft section at, at Dollarama. They come in a round tub. Um, I think it's $4. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to, I'm probably going to glue this down first. And kind of wing it as you go. So I'm going to put a little dab of glue there to hold that. Hot glue is your best friend. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a couple of these beads and I'm going to feed them on this wire. And it just gives you a little bit of a different look. Sometimes these beads, the holes are kind of wonky, so you have to help it a little bit first. There we 
go. That's kind of cute. And then I used to use a pencil for this step, but I found that the tapered of these paint brushes works way better. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just putting this paintbrush down right at the last bead and I'm just going to wrap this around. And then pull that out and it gives you this super cute little coil. Look how cute that is. Just a little extra decoration. So we'll go again with the beads. Also why I feel like I have a hair. Oh I do, it's attached. Fun. And same idea. And those coils will hold these beads on, so they're not going to go anywhere. Oh. Okay, now this is just some um, fern that I bought at Michael's. Cut off. These don't have wire in this part, it's just plastic, but and that'll be super cute. A little bit of glue. Pop that guy in there. Perfect. Um, try to use up all these little bits. Some of them anyways. Blue gun fuzz. Okay, one more. And I also would like to put maybe one of these leaves. They're a little bit big, but that'll work. And now a little little sprig of these styrofoam little 
eyeballs right right there nope I don't like that let's use more fern leaves we'll go with that we'll try that That'll work. And that's all I have close by. I'd like to put like a little flower there. Maybe one of those. I think these are all too big. Oh, there's some little ones. Perfect. That one's got some weird color on it. There we go. That will be good. I don't need all this stem, so I'm just going to cut that off. Another little dab of glue. And there we go. Fuzz on my face. Okay, so now I'm just kind of pulling these out. Kind of to there. And then you can see how they're twisted, oh, glue gun strings. They're twisted this way. I just grab them and twist them the opposite way. And then separate those four. This one has four strands. And then it just kind of gives you this little cute looking little, I don't know. I want to say fringe, but I don't think that's what it's called just adds another texture. So there you go. Super simple, super easy. Um, you can make it out of leftover craft stuff or anything. You can decorate them however you want. There's no real right or wrong way to doing them. So they're super cute. Adorable little pumpkin. If you have any questions, just pop it in the comments and I hope this inspired you to make your own little sweater pumpkins. You have all kinds of options. So many. This one's my favorite. I like the color. It's just, you know, it's pumpkin. Okay guys, thanks for watching.